Hello everyone, my name is Ralf Stemme. I'm product manager for Severe Service Control Valve for the Gestor company in Germany, Bremen. Today I would like to welcome to our presentation to the internal parts, that means the trim parts of our Severe Service Control Valves called the ZK29 and ZK313 and I want to show how to handle the demonstration case for these trim parts. I've got here a demo case and um, this is a very nice tool to show um, on uh, real parts how the valve trims are working. And here on the left hand side I want to show you at first the trim parts of the ZK29. So the trim is built out of at first a sleeve, it is changeable so we can take it out of the valve body without any extra tools and then on the um, seat ring. Then we have got here the radius station nozzle sleeve set. It's consisting out of four sleeves. We twist them against each other and finally the adjustment of these sleeves will be fixed by a pin we drive through of some, one of these three holes here. So then we are putting on the four sleeves on the seat. Now we have got here under the seat of course then a gasket. This is a metal gasket, a serrated metal gasket. This is the core of a gasket and here you see the complete gasket with graphite layers on the bottom and on the top. So we are putting it here under the seat ring. So now um, we have to take the valve plug and that's the valve plug here. The valve plug uh, will be bolted to the valve stem. And the valve plug is controlling the flow and finally even is able to close the valve. The plug and the seat ring are lapped together and we are able to fill ANSI class 6 or the leakage rate A. And uh, last but not least, the complete trim, because we have got the flow under the valve plug, will be covered by a wear protection sleeve to avoid any washing outs uh, of the valve body. That means that these uh, orifices here should show directly to the outlet channel of the valve body and so the body around the trim is protected against any cavitation or erosion effects. Um, here is a sign mark on the protection sleeve that it will be well installed at any time so you see here this mark should always show to the outlet. Now how the radius stage nozzle works. I give you here now um, some more information about it. Let's have a look at these sleeves. Um, in the moment we have got here, let me say, if I take one sleeve here on the uh, seat ring, this is a standard, let me say, look like a cage guided valve um, with a one stage pressure drop useful for differential pressures up to 40 bar. If we are above 40 bar then we need a multi-stage trim so that means that we are dividing the differential pressure into smaller steps. Therefore we are taking the sleeve number two. So I put both sleeves now in line. I've got still a one stage trim. I take here the ball pen and what I'm going to do is now I twist these sleeves a little bit against each other. So I have reduced the CV value, but it's still a one stage trim. But now what happens if I take the third sleeve? Now I take the sleeve number three over the sleeve number two. You see in the moment two and three are in line by the setting slot here. And now I'm going to twist them against. And now what happens is I build here the first orifice then um, the hole of the second sleeve is, has got the function of an expansion chamber and now I build the next orifice. So with three sleeves I'm able to handle a two-stage pressure drop. Now we can go ahead with the sleeve number four. I put it over the sleeve number three and I turn it again and now I build the next step. So with four sleeves I'm able to create a one, two, three stage pressure drop and finally this trim here is able to handle finally 100 bar differential pressure independent if we are talking about steam, water or flashing water or two-phase flow. 
the arrangement that we keep this arrangement here will be fixed with a pin we drive through of one of these three holes here so then it will be fixed that we don't lose this adjustment. Why we do have here three different holes? I want to show it here on this example because uh, the benefit of this design is with one is the same parts we can arrange on one hand a large CV value medium size or a small one. That means uh, if you have got a valve which works not in the right control stroke, often valves are sized too large by too many safety factors on it, then you can take out the trim parts, remove the pin, make a smaller adjustment, then you take the pin through one of these three holes here and then you have got a reduced CV value and the valve works in a proper way. Here we have got an arrangement of all these holes around the trim in a spiral way. That means that we have got a real linear characteristic and it don't look like a stairway. In this adjustment we have got always the same cross-sectional areas. This means that we have got a linear characteristic. An equal percentage characteristic can be created with the same trim parts. And this is absolutely unique in the warp world that um, without changing um, the trim parts we can change between linear and equal percentage characteristic. Let's have a look if I'm turning the sleeves in an uh, angle of around about 180 degree and then you see we have got small artifices becoming larger and larger. So we are able to realize an equal percentage characteristic with one and the same trim parts. Next feature is that I mentioned that the valve has uh, the ability to fulfill the ANSI class 6 in even better a zero leakage tight shutoff. That means we fulfill the leakage rate A. That means the plug and the seat are led together. Every valve has to pass a leakage test before it will leave our factory. Now, um, to prepare a valve to machine it that we have got a zero leakage, it's not such a big problem. But what happens after a half year or one year of operation? Because um, here it becomes uh, the challenging um, thing that um, the valve seats will be eroded, especially during the closing and opening procedure. If I'm going to close the control valve or an isolation valve, it's always the same story and even the same dilemma. I'm coming closer and closer with the valve plug to the seat and suddenly I'm producing a very small gap. And this small gap will create very high flow velocities at the sensitive seat surfaces of the valve plug and of the seat. How to avoid this? We have equipped the valve plug with two different areas. On one hand we have got here the seat surface, the ceiling surface, and here we have got a special control edge. And if you are looking at the seat ring, we have got here once again the seat surface, finally which fits to the seat surface of the plug, and we have got here a specific corner. Let's have a look at the inner sleeve at the lowest orifice. Here the corner is just appearing again. And now I want to show you the function of the control edge to protect the seat surfaces. If I'm going to close the valve, I'm going down more and more with the valve plug. And now if you have got a look at the lowest orifice, then the control edge is going to close the flow through the valve. So the flow is interrupted. But I'm still two millimeter away with the valve plug from the seat. This is a safety distance. What we need to protect the seat surfaces against high flow velocities and any wire drawing and erosion. Now I can drive down on the seat in a safe way and if I want to open the valve at first I lift off from the seat before later then the control edge gives the flow free for the medium. That means I can open and close the valve thousands of times even at very high differential pressures up to 100 bar without any erosion problems at the seat surfaces and that I don't lose the perfect tight shutoff. What we are doing is, 
um, that we are transferring the high flow velocities from the seat surface to a less important part, this is the control edge, and to this corner here is the seat ring. And um, even after a while, let me say half or one year, um, then we see some small signs of wear at the control edge here. Looks like that little mice bit here into the steel, but it's still functional enough to protect the seat surface against any high flow velocities. All in all, this guarantees a perfect tight shot off for a very long time and even an arrival service at um, very long operating times at severe service media like flashing water or um, high differential pressure applications for water, for steam and for drain applications. After we have had a look at the ZK29 trim parts, I would like to present uh, the trim parts of the ZK313. This is a class 2500 valve or nominal pressure P in 630 and it's suitable to differential pressures up to 300 bar. I've got downscaled uh, trim parts here in the demonstration case because the reboot bonds are a little bit heavy uh, to carry them and to handle them. So here we see the cut of the radius stage nozzle itself and um, here we have got one of the lower uh, gaskets here in the body. This is symbolized by a brass ring but in reality it is such a graphite packing ring with stainless steel caps on the top and on the bottom. The um, radius stage nozzle trim is consisting out of the nozzle itself and um, the seat um, insert here where we have got two different seats. We can see it very well at um, the main valve plug and um, the main valve plug and the valve stem are made out of one piece. And um, we have got here inside a second valve plug or we call it cone with its own seat surface here. We have got here the seat surface of the main valve plug and this is the seat surface of the second one. And the idea is once again to handle the high flow velocities as a closing and opening procedure and to keep them away from the sensitive seat surface here. And um, in reality we have got disc springs but here I've got a standard spare spring what we can easily compress. And now I want to show you the function of the tandem seat. The tandem seat has been founded by Gestra at the end of the 70s. And the first valves we have equipped were boiler feed pump recirculation valves with very high operating pressures. So now um, you see here the trim. And once again, we have got here the part with the two seats, the main seat here and inside is a secondary seat. This is the main valve plug where we want to protect the main seat here and here against erosion. And this is a secondary uh, seat, the cone. We call it the tandem seat with the seat surface here and inside in the seat bush. And now I'm going to reduce the flow through the valve and then I want to close the valve. And at first what you can see is that I'm going down with the internal cone here on the seat and I'm interrupting the flow. But I've got still here a safety distance, in reality it's 2.5 millimeter, between the main valve plug and the main seat. And then I'm going to compress the package of the disc springs and then I drive down the main valve plug on the main seat here and now the valve is completely closed. If I am going to open it, at first I lift off and after I have passed the safety distance here between these two parts and I am um, away, far away from the seat surfaces to avoid any um, erosion by high flow velocities and then I am going to open the valve with the internal valve plug or we call it cone and here is the valve in a usual, let me say, modulating or controlling position and therefore by this design we can close the valve and we can open the valve 
thousands of times even at extremely high differential pressures without any signs of wear at the main seat surfaces. We are transferring the high flow velocities from these sensitive parts which we want to protect to the less important part that means to the internal seat here and the cone. And even if you have got some signs of wear at these seat surfaces, they are still functional enough to protect the main seat. So that means after even one year or one and a half or two years of operation, uh, we can keep the perfect height shutoff, that means ANSI class 6 or the leakage rate A, that means finally zero leakage. Thank you very much for your attention.